Hello readers, this is Justin's 52 Books where I discuss my selections for the 52 Book Club's uh, reading challenges. And then today is a very special day because the uh, 2023 prompts just came out about, uh, it's about two o'clock right now. I just checked the email and it's there and I think it came out around about noon. So, hey, new prompts. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick hot take on what I think I'm gonna be doing and maybe some ideas of what uh, would apply to others. Let's get to it. Uh, here is the 2023 reading challenge. I haven't looked at these uh, too much yet. Um, and um, item of note, just some, these are just gonna be some initial thoughts. Uh, I'm not gluing myself to anything, um, but yeah, just some books. But I am going to you, you be using the uh, 2023 reading challenge to really do a deep dive uh, into women authors of science fiction both past and present. I want to really jump into that legacy because I realized that um, my knowledge and uh, reading experience is lacking in that. So uh, here we go. A lot of my, well, probably all of my uh, suggestions are going to be, these are suggestions for myself. So uh, all of my picks or choices or thoughts are going to be mostly science fiction um, authors who are female. Uh, but I might have some thoughts for other folks as well. Uh, so here we go, the 52 Book Club's 2023 Reading Challenge, starting with Prompt 1, a book with a subtitle. Um, well, that's an easy start because I am planning on reading uh, Lisa Yazik's uh, The Future is Female, um, and the, the uh, subtitle is 25 Classic Science Fiction Stories by Women from Pulp Pioneers to Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, this is actually Volume 1. Uh, although I don't know if she meant it to be volume one when she first started, but there is now a volume two. We'll see if I do that. But Lisa Yazik is kind of my guiding light uh, in this because she has done a lot of research on the early pulp uh, authors, specifically looking for females and uh, who were writing at the time, uh, looking at the, um, how that was evaluated. Um, because if, yeah, if you're involved, if you pay attention to literary science fiction, you'll, you'll know that there's some gender issues going on in that field, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this right now. But also, just to shore up my knowledge going back, I like science, classic science fiction, and I want to know the pieces of that um, in the past. So, moving on. Uh, so yeah, Futures Female for prompt number one. That was easy. Let's keep on going. Uh, prompt number two, featuring an inheritance. <clears throat> um don't know. Uh, this is where it gets tricky uh, because you had to read a book sometimes to know if it applies to the prompt. So um, I'm wondering if the Forkosigan books by Lois McMaster Bujold, uh love her fantasy. Never have read her. I've never read her science fiction, um, uh, specifically her Forkosigan sa saga. I wonder if that has an inheritance in it. Um, we'll see. Uh, not not deciding today, just looking at these. Uh, prompt number three, the title starting with a, or a title starting with the letter G. See, I knew this was coming up uh, because last year was ENF, so I thought I'd look ahead a little bit. I'm gonna go with Grass uh, by Sherry Tepper. Which, uh, said, uh, I don't really know much about that other than there's a SF masterwork about it and that's good enough for me. Uh, number four, title starting with letter H. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Head of Cerberus by, uh, she wrote under the pseudonym Frances Stevens, um, but her name was, what was it? I have it right here. Gertrude Barrows Bennett, um, predates H.P. Lovecraft, but wrote in kind of that same vein. In fact, I'm starting to see people who don't want to suggest H.P. Lovecraft for older fiction, or older, older science fiction, use Frances Stevens, uh, as kind of like an alternative issue with that is Francis Stevens was just as racist as H.P. Lovecraft. Not that that's a good thing, not that that's a fun thing, but um, hmm. it just goes all, that's just, that's how they wrote at that time, I guess. I don't know. But we'll see. Well, so I was expecting G and H. Uh, was not expecting a letter I, and I don't think I have anything uh, kind of in my head as far as that starts with a letter I. Um, Yes, I do. Infinity's Web by Sheila Finch. I just heard about that the other day. Uh, so I'll be reading Infinity's Web for the prompt five. Prompt six, under 200 pages. Um, that's tough. 
wonder if the female man has uh, is under 200 pages. Well, that looks like 230. I might, find, I might go out and find a copy of the female man that is under 20, uh, uh, under 200 pages if I can, because uh, there's always murder bot. Those are novellas. Those are under 200, 200 pages. I've been thinking about rereading those for a bit because they are really good. Uh, moving on. Prompt seven. A city or a country name in the title. Got that figured out. Um, R.F. Quang put out Babel last year. It's kind of interesting to watch people react to it and then like a book you know you're going to read and people sometimes don't like it. Uh, so, because I'm hearing some people say they love it and some people not all that excited about it. But yeah, I'll be reading R.F. Quang's Babel for uh, the city or country name in the title. Prompt eight dystopian fiction finally gonna get a chance or finally take the time to read uh children of men by pd james prompt nine a book with a dedication oh don't all books have a dedication um i know a lot of annalee newitz books have ded uh, dedications i'll be i'm always up for reading some of her uh, i've been meaning to read zen Cho's sorcerer to the crown that probably has one. Oh, there's all kind of books that have uh, dedications. That, that's going to be a gimme. And, uh, prompt 10. Takes place during the Roaring Twenties. I don't know what books I would have on tap for that. Mm. Don't know. We'll see. Not going to fill in all these blanks today, but uh, it's fun to look at them and uh, have a first reaction. Moving on, a book about secrets. Mm. Doris Lessing, oh man, she wrote Shakasta, which is all about, that'd be about the secret colonization of Earth, near as I can tell, I don't know. Uh, that's a big sucker, and I don't know if I wanna tackle that or not, but that uh, that's what pops in my head first. High fantasy, no problem. Uh, and that kind of dovetails with science fiction. You know, I'm not afraid, or I'm going to have to go into adjacent genres. Uh, the Crystal Cave by Mary Stewart is going to be my choice for that, definitely. Looking forward to that. Been meaning to read that for years. Published posthumously. I've never been able to say that. Um, there might be something... i meaning to pick up some Shirley Jackson. Uh, uh, I've, I've, I read the lottery in high school or maybe even middle school. Um... That's really the only thing I can think of. Maybe something was written or published by Andre Norton or Tip Tree posthumously. Uh, we'll see. Uh, prompt 14, a survival story. Oh, I know exactly what I want to read for that. Um, was at the movie theater watching the 40th anniversary of Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and... Uh, looked into the novelization of those and found out that those are by Hugo Award-winning uh, writer Vonda McIntyre. And that's kind of like the Star Trek I grew up with. The, those, are, that's, those are my... Everyone has a Trek, and those are my Trek. Uh, particularly Star Trek 2, 3, and 4. And she wrote those... Uh, those novelizations. And... Yeah, they're all survival stories. Yeah. Uh, so I might read all three of those for that prompt. <laughs> it's tough to find that out. Uh, prompt 15, set in Australia. I have no idea for that. Yeah, no. Uh, nothing pops out at me right now. Not that I want to deny Australia or anything like that. Just I'm off my radar. Other hem Not in my hemisphere <laughs> of knowledge, I suppose. Um... Prompt 16, a uh, book featuring one of the seven deadly sins. Uh, I don't even know what all the seven deadly sins are. Greed and lust and pride and gluttony. And... That's enough. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm not sure what I'll read for that. Nothing pops out at me right now, but we'll be able to find something for that. That's probably going to be a gimme. 
that might be my opportunity to read about you know, it says featuring one that doesn't mean it's part of the title um but I'm thinking about the pride of uh, dr frankenstein i've never read mary shelley's frankenstein so i might do that we'll see i don't know prompt 17 a caribbean author nail hopkinson is my choice for that will um She's from Jamaica, but uh, writes from Toronto, uh, or at least that's the setting of most of, uh, at least the fiction I've read of hers, Brown Girl in the Ring, um, and she, I know she's got a number of other authors, and I will be reading her for that prompt. Prompt 18, set during a war other than World War One or World War II. Uh, well, there's all kinds of books by, uh, about Civil War in the United States. Uh, but I don't know about uh, female authors in science fiction, so we'll, we'll give that one some thought and leave it for later. A typographic cover. What on earth does that mean? It means with typography on the cover, right? So a pretty cover. Hmm. I know. The Female Man's cover. Perfect. Awesome. Because I need to read The Female Man. I've never read that. And that's kind of where feminist science fiction, at least in whichever wave that is, second, third, whichever. Um, but there's a cover with The Female Man's got different typography uh, for that cover. And that's what I'll be, re be reading for that. Awesome. Because I wanted to incorporate that into this, this list today. A book about siblings. Oh, I don't know. It's going to be a bit of a gimme, I guess. Nothing pops out of me right at this moment. We'll see. Uh, a secondhand book. Hmm. I know exactly what I read for that. My wife has a copy of When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill, and she loved that book. And I loved uh, whatever her book was about the moon. The <laughs> moon? That's it. That's it, the, the Girl Who Drank the Moon. I couldn't remember uh, exactly what it was called, but I did love that book. And yeah, When Women Were Dragons, I'll read that uh, for the secondhand book, since my wife owns that uh, book, and she'll hand it off to me. Bos a book with a body positive message. Oh, I don't know. That's going to take some thought and a little bit of uh, doing on my end, just because... I don't always have to navigate that kind of thing, so we'll we'll see. Um, I suppose when it comes to clones, body positive, body positive means uh, some different thing. Or maybe that's my uh, opportunity to read Frankenstein, since we're being body positive and adding bodies, and that is a dad joke there. All right, and an alliterative title. I don't know if I have anything ready to go right off the top of my head for that. When women were dragons, uh, it's a little alliter alliterative. Oh, we'll see. Nordic noir. That might be my opportunity to finally read *The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo*. And it's kind of uh, touching sci-fi, although that does not have a female author. There's a uh, book called *The Employees* by Olga Raven. Raven. She's Scandinavian. I don't know if that necessarily qualifies as Nordic noir, but. That might be where I read that. I tried to read that last year, and that 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 looks like a weird, weird book. We'll go. We'll see. A fashionable character. Murderbot's got a cool uh, suit that's fashionable. Been, reading, been meaning to read Zencho's Sorcerer of the Crown. I bet you there's a fat. Ah, no, 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 no. Um, Joan Vinci has a book called The Snow Queen. And every cover I've ever seen of that has a woman in this huge headdress. So I'm gonna go with 
The Snow Queen by John Venge for that book. Book that has an epilogue. Oh, no idea. No idea. There's, that's pretty broad, and we'll figure that out. Newberry Medal winner. Well, if I wasn't doing female science fiction authors, um, Frog and Toad. Everyone should read Frog and Toad. Do yourself a favor and go read Frog and Toad right now. If uh, if um, if you haven't, because that is my favorite Newberry Medal Award winner. Um, as far as what I'm going to read for science fiction uh, female authors, and we'll see. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we'll find some 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 fantasy fiction that would uh, apply to that. A book that includes a funeral. <coughs> Excuse me. A book that includes a funeral. No idea. No idea what I'm going to do for that. Prompt 29, a book that sends you down a rabbit hole. Well, Murderbot's a real rabbit hole. If I, I could apply all these to Murderbot, I think, if I really wanted to, um, because I really want to read those uh, books again. Um, I think there's one, and I want to reread read the Broken Earth books, too, so I think there's probably a funeral in that. Or, see, I'm still in funeral. The rabbit hole. Well, Broken Earth applies to a rabbit hole as well. But um, this last year, 2022, I fell into a huge rabbit hole about the television show The Prisoner from the 60s. And there's one more unauthorized biography of The Prisoner that has um, uh, a female author and it's science fiction. So I'm going to go with that. I think it's called Fallout. Yeah, Fallout for that. All right, prompt 30. An author with the same the same name as you. That is my least favorite prompt. Um, cause I don't know well one. I suppose it's Justine. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm not gonna talk about my last name. And it wouldn't apply anyway. My middle name is Charles, so maybe maybe Charlie Jane Anders. Uh Maybe I'll find a, an author with the name of Charlotte. I don't know. Maybe an author with Justine. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, prompt 31, set in a workplace. Janelle Monet wrote a book last this year, 2022, uh, called The Memory Librarian. I think it's short stories, actually. Um, and it's related to, as I understand it, related to her album, Dirty Computer, which I loved. My wife got me into that. Um, but I mean, it, and then I did a kind of a deep dive into Janelle, Janelle Monet. Always been a, sign, uh, a, a, a fan and a, an advocate for science fiction, uh, going back into all her albums. And I really liked that. Uh, so yeah, there's room in my list for Janelle Monet. I would definitely do that. Prompt 32, published by Macmillan. This is where these prompts, uh, 2022 as well, because I think it was Simon Schuster or well, whatever it was. Uh, I never pay attention to publishers. So it's interesting to look into those because, again, the scavenger hunt aspect of the, of the, um, of the reading challenges it makes you think about books in a different way. And I don't generally care about publishers. But interesting... But Mac Macmillan, I think, owns Tor, and Tor does a lot of science fiction. And Tor does the Tor Essentials line. So if, I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but if Macmillan owns Tor and I can do Tor Essentials, there's all kinds of books. In fact, I think Deborah Doyle's book, Night's Weird, is in that. It's, it's going to be published as a Tor Essential. Uh, but Joe Walton's... Um, among others, is in there as well. I love that book. China Mountain Jang by... Whoever wrote China Mountain Jang. Uh, ah, China Mountain Jang by uh, McHugh is really good as well, and that's a tour essential. Um, some really good Macmillan books there, if I'm remembering right, and the tour is owned by Macmillan. Uh, prompt 33. Well, there you go. Uh, China Mountain Jang was banned. I'm pretty sure that was banned. Um, I'm pretty sure we can find books that were banned in China. Um, but I don't know if I can think of any books right off the bat. 
maybe Ursula Le Guin's been banned somewhere. Um, well, we'll see. I'm not sure if I got one in my back pocket for a banned book by a female science fiction author. Prompt 34, featuring mythology. Um, I don't know. If dragons are mythology, I've been thinking about reading Dragon Riders of Pern books. I've never touched those. Ooh. Jeanette Ng's, um, what's it called? Under the Pendulum, Under the Pendulum Sun. It is about fairies. I don't know if that necessarily qualifies as, uh, as mythology either, but well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Prop 35, a book you meant to read last year. Hmm. I read most of the books I meant to read this last year. Oh, uh, On a Sunbeam is a graphic novel by Tilly Walden. I was starting to read that. Um, and then at the same time was thinking about doing all the scenes, science fiction, all female authors. And so I kind of... Return that to the library with the idea of uh, getting it again. Or Ammonite. I've been meaning to read Ammonite for, uh, by, by Griffith for, for, for more than a little bit. Yeah, so that might be the book I meant to read. I, I meant to read last year, which would be 2022 right now, as I say this. Chapters have cliffhangers. Uh, prompt 36. I don't know. <laughs> that's the one. That's one of the ones where you have to read the books to find out. Um, hmm. Murderbot, Murderbot books uh, have cliffhangers, um, and if you look as, at the novellas as the chapters, that 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 would apply. We'll see. Prompt thirty-seven, written in present present tense. We'll see. I have no idea. I think parts. This came up with last with uh, the prompt from the or the reading challenge from twenty twenty two, where the second person challenge, which people struggled with, but I thought it was important to to look at those books. Um, and it's kind of dovetails with that kind of dovetails with that chant prompt, because I think if you're writing in second person, it's. <laughs> you are going to be generally writing in present tense as well. Uh, you are doing this for rather than you did do this. So that might be a Broken Earth book for me, or all three of them at that point, because I'm thinking about reading these in order as well. And if I can get ahead, I'll write, I'll, I, I will have some, some time by the time Prompt 37 comes around. Prompt 38, an enemies to the lover's plot. Uh, maybe the Vorkosigan saga there, if I, you know, I kind of did some cursory looks at that, and that might be there. Elf Quest has those. Uh, someone, this is why I, I like the Facebook group. I generally stay off of Facebook, um, but the Facebook group uh, for the 52 Book Club is pretty cool because people bring up these books, and, and I just never thought about them or haven't thought about them for years. Someone brought up the Elf Quest comic books, and my brother had uh, my brother had a uh, subscription to that, and I never found out how it ended because the subscription ended. Someone else was reading was talking about those books, and I know that there is an enemies to lovers plot in that. So that would be a joy to read. Read those. Uh, prompt thirty nine, the final book in a series, no problem. And Kate Jemison has been covered there uh, because I just found out today that <clears throat> her follow-up to la last year or the year before City We Became uh, is part of a duology, and that's the, the world we make will be my choice for that. Prompt 40, written by a comedian. Oh, that's hard. Because if you're a science fiction author, the Venn diagram for science fiction author and an actual true blue comedian is gonna be very, very small. Like. I'm tempted to try and say Becky Chambers because I hear that her books are very, very funny. We'll see. I've never read a Becky Chambers book, um, and that is something I want to rectify with this um, with this reading challenge. Uh, prompt 41, a character who is a refugee. Uh, Ursula Le Guin plays in that pool a lot. They're gonna, uh, another opportunity to do the Broken, uh, Broken Earth books. We'll see.
Number 42, time in the title. Hmm. Oh, uh, first thing that occurs to me is uh, Midnight Robert by Neil Hawkinson, but I've already been thinking about reading something else by Neil Hawkinson, so I don't know if I want to devote. I like her, but I don't know if she gets two spots on my list. Um, mid, uh, that'd be Midnight Time in the title. Just kind of going through my list, seeing what else could apply. Time in the... T uh, Chicks Dig, Dig Time Lords, a celebration of Doctor Who, which apparently won a, a Hugo, or maybe was nominated, um, by Lynn M. Thomas. Might read that. I've never been a huge Doctor Who fan, so... Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll read that. I'm not sure, but that's in my back pocket. What else? Oh. You know, if you're in the military, you have watches, and that is set up by time. And there's a book called Space Opera by J.S. Dewes, D-E-W-E-S, called The Last Watch. And from my perspective, having been in the military, that would be a time. So either the Time Lord's book or The Last Watch for time in the title. <clears throat> Prompt 43, a book everyone has read. Oh, yeah. Shirley Jackson uh, would, would uh, apply for that. Lathe of Heaven. I've never read The Lathe of Heaven. Um, we'll see what I... Frankenstein. I've never read Frankenstein. Might read Frankenstein for that if I can't plug it in for anything else here. Prompt 44, a contemporary setting. What is contemporary meaning? Um, I might read Mrs. Calvin for that. By Rachel Engelsman. I don't know what year did that come out. We'll see. Uh, oops. Because that seems like a modern contemporary book. Uh, maybe another Becky Chambers uh, option. We'll see. Don't know. Axiom's End, I think, is probably set in contemporary settings by, who's that? Lindsay Ellis. Prop 45, a first, first word in the book is the, man, that's almost a gimme. Oh, the Murderbot Diaries, the Future is Female, the Memory Librarian. Um... The lottery. The I'm gonna read that for someone else. Yeah, we got we got options for that. We can the prey of gods by Nikki Dryden. Um, been thinking about reading that for a bit. Uh, prompt forty six. A script. Script font in the spine. Script font in the spine. Well, that's going with the typo, typo, typographic cover. In the spine, though. Oh, in the, yeah, I don't have a spine on. I, I read all digital books. But I actually do like uh, I like it when these reading challenges push you into the hard copy books. That, that, that's good. It's good to keep that that stuff going. But I have no, no idea. We'll, we'll, we'll have to find something. Oh, and oh, here we are. 47, 48, 49, and 50. Those are all... Um, there was a drawing, and those uh, those prompts have already been released, so I already have selections for those. Um, 47, set in uh, the city of Dublin. That's going to be Spare and Found Parts for me. That's going to be Spare and Found Parts by Sarah Maria Griffin. It's hard to find a science fiction author, female science fiction author, writing in Dublin, but Spare and Found par Parts apparently applies to that. Uh, sounds like it's someone called it children, children's lit uh, um, I don't know if it's necessarily that um, but we'll see what we do uh, part of this is broadening horizons and speaking of broadening horizons I've only ever read Kindred by Octavia Butler so I was loved I love the idea that Octavia Butler's on here I know people are not going to be happy with that because Octavia Butler is a true blue science fiction author and uh, people are not going to like People aren't going to like Lilith's Brood um, because I hear it's icky. Um, but I think I'm probably going to read that um, because I feel like it's... If you're going to read... If you're going to call yourself a science fiction reader, it sounds like that is 
one of the books that you need to have in your back pocket, in your stable, uh, as far as having read and having understood. Uh, prompt 49, books on the cover, Paying Shepherds, uh, the cartographers didn't give me my choice for that. Uh, been meaning to read that for a little while. It's in the sense it came out, it looks really cool. Prompt 50, uh, related to the word murder. I'm not sure. We'll see how much of other murder bot I can fit into other things, but there's an author named Barbara Nin Byfield, um, who I read probably the first author, first book I ever like read and loved, because uh, she, she wrote children's books in the 60s. And I found it in my uh, elementary school li library when I was when I was six or seven. Uh, uh, call, uh, the book was called The Haunted Spy. And I found out that she did some, um, that she did some uh, mystery books as well. So she's got one, what's it called? Give me a second. Solemn High Murder. I might go with Solemn High Murder by Barbara Nind by Barbara Nind Byfield just to keep her name going uh, because I I loved that I loved I found out that she did uh, it's called the Book of the Weird or the Glass Harmonica the if you're a fantasy author you need to under you need to find that book out because it's wonderful um, that was my book pertaining to joy last year um, yeah Barbara Nind Byfield uh, love her. And the last, second to last, penultimate, right? Uh, prompt 51 doesn't fit into the other 51 prompts. Well, that's anything. And there is, so again, you got to uh, read something you want to read. I don't know what I'll do for that. I haven't read any Annalie Newitz yet. Um, and she is uh, always writing science fiction or science fiction adjacent. <coughs> or book that keeps on popping up onto my kind of radar uh cat rambo's you sexy thing i don't know what that fits into but it looks like space uh space opera and uh, looks like space opera i should be reading so we'll find something for that prompt 52 and the last one published in 2023 i have no idea uh, i'm not even saying anything about that i have some ideas excuse me about books that are coming out but we'll see about that when we get to 2023 Oh, that's it. That's a lot of words I just said. Um, I think my favorite prompt. Uh, if McMillan owns Tor, any chance to talk about the Tor Essentials, uh, because I really like that that line of books. Uh, is I like that. Um, I like the prompt that sends you down a rabbit hole. I love that. Uh, um, the idea written in the present tense, that's, that's going to be an interesting prompt as well. I think my least favorite prompt, uh, author with the same name as you, uh, not, it's problematic if I'm trying to read all the female authors. Um, book that takes place during the Roaring Twenties is going to be a, a challenge. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah. To the people who put out the 52 Book Club, all the people who work with that, I appreciate your prompts. I appreciate the work. I appreciate the the community. And yeah, this is awesome. Uh, looks like a good, fun year uh, that we're all going to be engaging with again. Uh, again, my name is Justin. I'll be doing videos about each and every uh, prompt of which book I choose um, here throughout the year. That's the plan anyway. Didn't work last year, and uh, it's going to work this year. Um, but until then, this is going to be me signing off, um, until the next time, uh, happy reading.